The source is uh, Cecil Rhodes. Uh, straight away, I go, oh, that name sounds very familiar. And actually, the caption straight away helps me out with that. Great Britain's famous empire builder. Okay, so straight away, I know, okay, well, the caption gives me a very helpful hint there. Great Britain's famous empire builder. Guessing this guy's a fan of imperialism, if he's known as their famous empire builder. What does he say, though? Cecil Rhodes says, said this in 1877, okay, so it was in 1877. That's also probably pretty helpful. Uh, we happen to be the best people in the world with the highest ideals of decency and justice and liberty and peace. And the more of the world we inhabit, the better it is for humanity. So I'll read that and think, wow, that's um, pretty full of himself, isn't it? Uh, Cecil Rhodes, Confession of Faith. Okay, interesting, their book there. Confession of Faith is what it's called. Sounds like it's a, uh, he is kind of saying, so there's two kind of ideas of a confession. A confession is something you, you say to a priest or to someone when you've done something wrong. You might confess to your wife that it was you who broke the TV remote, or you might confess to the priest that you've thought impure thoughts, etc., etc., etc. The other thing is, is a confession that you do where you confess what you believe. So you're, you're, you're kind of, it's you're uh, revealing something about yourself. So it can be negative. I'm confessing my sins or I'm conf confessing something inappropriate that I've done. The other one is I'm confessing something that I believe. So I read that confession of faith and I think, okay, so this is a book where he's basically outlining what he thinks. All right, what, what type of source have we got here? Um, let's see. Whoa, sorry about that. Let's just ignore that uh, random squiggle on the screen. What kind of source do we have? Uh, confession of Faith. I'm guessing it's a book or a tract or something like that. I'm not exactly told, but it's obviously something that's been published. It's obviously something that is, that is what have we got? He's kind of thought about it. I highly doubt that it's, uh, it's kind of an off-the-cuff comment. Okay? It's not someone walked past and said, hey, hey, what do you think? Uh, so, so we can probably surmise from this that he believes what he's writing. He's thought about it. This is actually what he thinks about the world. I'm pretty safe with that. Okay, Origins, we know it's come from. It's come from Cecil Rhodes. We know he's a Great Britain's famous empire builder, so we know that he's a, he's a well-known person, well-known enough so that his thoughts have obviously become a book. All right, so that's the origins. Motives for writing it. Not 100% sure. I don't, I don't know from, uh, from either the caption or from the fact that it's from a book, but I can make some guesses from what it says. I'm guessing that he is seeking to persuade people. That's what I'm going to guess because of the way he writes. Listen to it. We happen to be the best people in the world with the highest ideals of decency and justice and liberty and peace. And the more of the world we inhabit, the better it is for humanity. What does that sound like to you? Does it sound like he's just kind of, he's just saying it for the sake of saying it? What does it sound like it's part of? Something starting with A. It's not a rhetorical question. It sound like, sounds like he's making a, an argument. Most certainly. Sounds like this is him making an argument. Alright? This is him saying, this is why imperialism is awesome. Not just kind of, uh, just in general. Obviously, the imperialism that British, you know, the British Empire deserves to be, to have its place in the sun, it deserves to be there. Okay, so, so we, we know what type of source it is. It's a, is it the whole book? Do you reckon that's the, the book that he published? Do you reckon they got there and, uh, and, and got the nice leather cover, and then he wrote 15 words, and then there's the back cover, and people opened it and went, well, that was a pretty solid read. Uh, so it's probably, what is it, starting with E? Yep. Okay, so it's an excerpt or an extract of the book. Does that make it, does that make it unreliable? Because it's an excerpt or an extract? Yes. Does it? Because in context it could be something else. Does that make it unreliable? It could. This is a key point here, key point that we need to think about, okay? Um, just because, alright, just because it's an excerpt here does not make it unreliable. It may make it less reliable. 
But what you want to say, okay, is uh, if, if you're kind of talking about actually analyzing this, is that you'd want to say it has to be taken into account. Okay, so there's certain presumptions that you can make. You would assume that they've taken something out of the book. Unless there's a whole bunch of dots around it, you can assume that that thought, it's a whole thought, isn't it? That, that kind of, this argument that he's made, it's, it's two sentences, isn't it? Yeah? It's kind of, it's a whole thought. So that's something he said in his book. So unless it's really, really badly taken out of context, you can assume that it doesn't vary too much from what's in his book. But you want to say, as it's an excerpt, that needs to be taken into account when looking at reliability. Does that make sense? Okay. Often I find when, when you guys are talking about, when, when students in general, are talking about reliability, it's almost like they assume the historian is dumb. Like they'll say, it's an ex excerpt, so therefore it's unreliable. Like the historian isn't able to, th to think for himself or herself and say, well, let's actually look at the rest of it. All right? or, or you might say, it's got helpful information in it um, for an investigation because it tells the historian um, what happened. Now, if a historian is writing a book about a topic, you would assume they already know what happens. Yes? So if we're asking for how useful it is for a topic, telling me that it's going to tell the historian what happened, no. It might tell you what happened, but I'm guessing the historian already knows what's happening, and you want to be a bit more nuanced in how you say it's useful. It's useful because it adds to the perspective of the British in that thing. Does that make sense? Yeah? Rather than it just tells them what happened. They know. Yeah, they know more than we do. They're a historian. Okay? If it said, someone who knows nothing about the topic, how could it be used? Then, then you'd say that. But it's not. It's a historian. You'd assume that he knows. All right, what else we got? Um, what have we done here? Motive? I'm assuming he's trying to persuade people to his point of view. Would that, yeah? I'm assuming that we'll, if, we, if we, for example, if we're going to prove that, we might say uh, he's seeking to make an argument. He's seeking to persuade people because the language that he uses is quite, is quite intense. So, for example, we've got, we happen to be the best people in the world. It's quite clear cut, isn't it? He's not saying we're pretty good. He's saying we're the best people in the world with the highest five things there. Decency, justice, liberty, and peace. Okay, so four. I'm not a maths teacher, calm down. All right, so four things that he says there that, that he kind of, that's a massive claim to make. And, and, and the claim is then built up with an even more bigger claim, an even greater claim that, therefore, because we're like that, the more of the world we inhabit, the better it is for humanity. Wow, he makes it almost sound like it's something that they... That was supposed to be you, my apologies. That they must do. Yeah? All right? So, I was trying to think of something that uh, messed... Men, me, nothing makes sense. I'll just cross it out. He's, he's almost saying, he's almost saying that it is, um, he's almost saying it's imperative that they do it. He's almost saying, look, if you've got these high ideals, if you've got the highest ide decency, if you've, got, if you've got peace and justice of the highest court and you're the best person in the world, you need to go out and take the world. All right, so it's this really like full-on argument that he's making. Okay, so what have we got here? We know what type of source it is. We know where it came from. Cecil Rhodes, great famous empire builder. Uh, in his book, Confession of Faith, or it's a, written a magazine or something. In fact, it's got a title. It makes me think it's a book. The motive, he seems to be wanting to get people across to his idea of empire building, of, of imperialism. His audience, I'm guessing... Anyone, anyone have any idea here? I'm guessing people that, that will read it, so people that, that an audience that will, are interested in this, but there's a, there's a very vital clue in there. And if, you, if, you wanna, if you're asked about who he's writing to, you need to pick up on it. A British audience? Pardon? A British audience? Why? Because it mentions he's Britain's great empire builder. It implies he's right that's, not, that's not the clue that I'm thinking of. You're right, but there's a reason why. I'll give you a clue. You don't have to read very far into the source to find the answer. We happen to be? We. We happen to be the best people in the world. We. So is he writing to German people? No. He's writing to British people. Yes? You're not going to write to German people and say, 
look, I'm British and you're German and we just happen to be the best. No, he's talking about Britain expanding their empire. So he's clearly writing to a British audience. We. It'd be pretty rude if he's writing to German people saying, hey, um, British people are awesome. So we should expand our empire, but you shouldn't. He's writing to British people within the empire and saying we should continue to build our empire. All right, so there's his audience. Uh, content, what does it say? We've talked about the content. He's making an argument. He's using, so in content, we talk about the type, the tone of the words. He's using very black and white language, isn't it? He doesn't say, um, we, we happen to be pretty good, or some people might argue that we're, he says, we happen to be the best people in the world. We have the highest. Not we have some really good, and you know, it depends on your interpretation. It's very black and white language. The tone that he's using is very strong, very kind of sure of itself, yeah? And the argument is certainly a black and white argument. Either he's wrong or he's right. All right, so for content, you don't want to just rewrite what it says. You want to talk about how he's saying it. All right, reliability, we can check it up. He's a famous person. It's a book. We can go and check if the words are actually written there. And he, we can actually check on the rest of the body of his work, if he's, a, if he's a writer, to see if this part of this point of view is actually close to what he said in other, in other parts. The fact that it says he's Great Britain's famous empire builder helps us out. All right, because it's probably a lot of people have written about him. So rely, from a reliability point of view, we can check it, and it's, it's, it's very easy to check on the reliability, which makes us think it is reliable. Yeah, you're not going to pick a topic like this and just get it completely wrong because it's going to be very easy for you to be found out. Therefore, is it useful? It's very useful for somebody wanting to know what attitudes to imperialism were in the late 19th century out of the mouth of a very famous British imperialist.